What's up everyone, Ben and Beta here. And today I want to tell you a little bit about my experience with my first seven or so flights with the DJI Mini 4 Pro drone and some lessons I've learned as well as what my impressions are after those flights. Do I still like this drone? Would I still recommend it? So let's get started with a few lessons that I think are important for new drone pilots. So the first thing that's I think really important is to make sure that you plan before you head out. So that means updating your firmware to the latest version and that makes sure that you won't have any issues when you're out flying and that your drone's gonna give you the best possible experience. It only takes a few minutes to do and it's definitely worth the time and effort. The second part of being prepared before you head out is make sure you check your settings after you've updated your drone because sometimes those settings change and then you can find that something that you had set previously was set back to factory defaults or something like that. So you should always go back and, and check those, which you should do as part of your pre-flight plan anyway. As an example, I thought I had everything set for my first flight. I even looked over the settings ahead of time, but it turned out I was in photo mode and I was just taking pictures instead of video. It only took me a couple minutes to figure it out, but it would have been nice if everything was set up properly from the beginning. And ensuring that everything is set up correctly before you head out might make the difference between getting that great shot or missing it. Another thing that I think is important is to check out the Before You Fly app. The Before You Fly app is extremely helpful, especially for someone who's new to drones. It can help you identify where to fly, as well as take you through a pre-flight checklist to make sure you're ready to fly just in general. And lastly, it can also help you create a flight plan, which is pretty cool. Also, I would add that this is a pretty well put together app and it, and it works great. It's just good to help make sure that I've checked all my bases before I fly. The second lesson I've learned through a ton of YouTube comments and just trying to figure out what is actually the truth, the FAA rules around drone flight can be kind of difficult and challenging to understand. I had lots of great comments from many different viewers. Thanks for that, by the way, I really appreciate it. And there were many different opinions on part 107 especially. As a product person, I feel like this is an area where the FAA could do a better job in being clear about what the rules are. But let's be honest, many other government sites are also super confusing. Have you ever tried to get a GMRS radio license? I have, and the site didn't work for like three days. So I guess that's just kind of par for the course for a lot of these government websites, but it's unfortunate because I think it could be much better explained and make things better for especially drone newbies like myself. The third thing that I learned is that takeoff and landing can be more of a challenge than you might think. It can be hard to find a spot to launch and land your drone that's flat and won't coat the drone in dirt and dust, which is the enemy of any electronic device. I've had a few minor incidents, one where my Mini 4 Pro wouldn't take off because a piece of grass was in the way, and another where the only place I could land was on top of my car, and because I do a really good job of taking care of my car and have a nice coating on it, when it landed, it slid down the back of my car and hit my shark fin, but luckily neither one of those resulted in any damage to any part of the drone whatsoever, which is awesome, everything's good, the propellers are still in good shape. So I inspected everything obviously before and after flying and it's still in really good shape. So I was lucky there. However, some viewers left some great comments letting me know that you can buy these portable landing mats like this one here, which I'll be putting up a review of in the future. And I have to say that it was really helpful in being able to both take off and land and find a nice flat spot and not get dirt everywhere. So I would definitely recommend something like that. And it's a good tip for a newbie drone owner. Lesson number four, the kits that you can get are really nice. When you can have extra batteries along or longer batteries, those things are all great. That being said though, I originally only purchased just the controller with the screen, which I think is definitely worth it. But again, I think you can get away with just using your phone if that's all you can afford. And they're just 34 minute battery. And to be honest with you, if you're going to fly and then move to another spot and then fly again, and you can charge in between your vehicle like I was able to do, I could do that either through the USB ports in my car, or I actually have a portable battery that I bring along and I can charge that way. It worked just fine and I was able to get plenty of flight time. My battery was almost completely charged when I would get to the next site. So that was never really a big deal. So I would say that you can get the least expensive version of all of this stuff and then kind of upgrade over time and then add some of these other accessories that might be helpful. You don't necessarily need to spend like $1,500 on a drone kit and get everything right away. Plus, 
it's going to take some time to get used to how everything works. And then you kind of learn over time what's going to be helpful and what's not. The one caveat to that would be when you're flying in heavy winds, the battery drains a lot faster. So with the smaller battery, you just have to be a little bit more aware of how long you're going to be up and flying and that you might have to recharge a little bit more often. Even when it was windy, I still got plenty of flight time. So I'm not too worried about that, but that is something to keep in mind that a bigger battery will definitely last you a little bit longer in things like heavy wind. The last lesson that I'll tell you about today is that practice is really important and you need to remember to hit the record button in order to get any actual footage from your drone. So throughout this video, you've seen a lot of video coming from my controller and that happened to be because I accidentally just didn't hit the record button. It's important that you take the time and energy to practice with your drone, learn how to fly it so that you can remember even the small things like remembering to hit record. Practice will help you get used to the controls and it'll help you understand what all the buttons do and what all the on-screen indicators show. One example of learning how things worked is when using features like master shots or quick shots. What I learned was that these modes will automatically start recording when you activate them. But if you want to record after you're finished with the shot, you need to hit the record button again. Further, practicing with these special modes ensures that you'll understand the space and angles that a drone needs to complete their automated shots. But once you get the hang of them, you get some really fantastic shots. The last thing is when you learn how to fly manually, it'll help you with other things like waypoints so that you can set up some really cool shots. Plus it always ensures you can get your drone back in case something happens. Those are the lessons I've learned, but is the Mini 4 Pro still a great investment? Do I think it's a good drone? Before I get to that, I just would like to ask that if you're thinking about buying a drone or a drone accessory, that you might hit one of the links in my description or from my website, benandbeta.com. You won't pay anything additional. So even if you wait till Black Friday, I'd still appreciate it if you hit one of those links up before you bought and it'll help out my channel and allow me to keep creating these videos. And if you like this video, just take a moment to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that, and maybe share this video with a friend. So back to, is this drone worth it? Would I recommend it after seven flights? Well, you get some unbelievably beautiful shots with the Mini 4 Pro that I think are hard to get without having a drone. That being said, while I have not used a Mini 3 or a Mini 3 Pro, I think if you picked one of those up, you'd probably be happy with the results from those as well. But the Mini 4 Pro, is it really worth it? Yeah, I think it is. I think the feature set and the price point are really hard to beat, and I'll be surprised to see what DJI comes out with in the future as well. It's a really well-made drone. It's easy to fly. It has amazing features on it. And I think if you pick it up, you're going to love it too. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any tips or tricks to share, leave them in the comments. I'm sure a lot of people would enjoy learning from other people as well. So remember to live your life in beta and we'll see you next time.